Hi, this is Alan Shea with Our Society Show, and we are here today at one of the greatest, I'm going to say, community events that we probably have had here in Pasadena because it really have brought the community out. And with your help and guidance, why don't you share with the viewers what should we expect today? Well, this is a day of dialogue on the future of policing. And we have people now, the room is packed, community members, police officers, other law enforcement who are having a discussion about the challenges going on with law enforcement and members, especially of the African-American community here in the Pasadena, Naltadena area. Days of Dialogue, our organization has done this for many years, since about 1995. And we've been focused on this particular topic since 2015. We have trained facilitators who are working with people who are at each table and they're engaging in a dialogue that those members of that particular small group wish to uh, discuss concerning police officer interaction and what they hope to see happen in the future with uh, law enforcement interaction with community members. So I'm glad that you consider it a, a successful event already. We expect to hear a lot more from the community members inside. Well, absolutely, and, and the reason why I believe not only is it going to be a success, uh, we need it in light of some of the incidents that have taken place here in Pasadena and certainly the climate that we are experiencing here in our country as well. And why don't you share with the viewers before I let you go, how did you uh, come into contact with creating and, and coordinating this event? Well, in, in 95, my husband, Mark Ridley Thomas, was a member of the Los Angeles City Council. And as a result of tensions around that time, uh, members he called our prophetic leaders together, members of our community, and asked essentially what we should do. They decided we needed a day of dialogue on race relations in Los Angeles. And you'll see since that time we've been having days of dialogue. Uh, I was with the city attorney's office at that time in charge of the dispute resolution program. And dialogue was an especially effective tool to help members of the community address serious concerns where they did not feel heard before by those who were who had responsibility for addressing the concerns that they had. So we hope now to give members of this community the same kind of opportunity to interact with uh, the police chief and, and other police officers and members of the highway uh, patrol as well in addressing their concerns about incidents that have occurred in this community. Well, great. And last but not least, again, um, being from Los Angeles versus here in Pasadena, the Altadena area, uh, what, what contact or what outreach uh, um, drew you to this, to this destination here? Well, Veronica Jones, a member of the Altadena Town Council, was the person who reached out to Days of Dialogue. We hope to make this now a bridge back to the members of this community who can provide services like our organization Days of Dialogue to really meet the needs of the local folks here. So we're delighted to have come out, but I really want to tell you there's a lot of talent right here in Pasadena and Altadena, and we are glad to assist you all in uh, improving the quality of life of your community. Well, we certainly appreciate it. So we're going to join the rest of the team in here and get a great show today. All right, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you share with the viewers uh, your name and uh, what what do you hope to hear from today's uh, discussions and uh, end result of today's meeting? Well, my name is John Perez. I'm with the Pasadena Police Department as the acting chief. And for me, I'm hoping really we have understanding out of today's dialogue, that we have the ability to get to know each other um, a little bit better, understand our perspectives, and really have a deeper appreciation for the roles that we all have in this community because it is our community as one, both in Altadena and in Pasadena, my entire 33 year career, it's always been a connection between the two. There's never been a separation from the two communities and this is not the time to start. Absolutely. So why don't you share with the viewers really how 
um, how meaningful will this meeting be for our community and then moving forward to really uh, carve out a, a model example for other cities to draw from? Well, I think number one, everybody watches Pasadena and Altadena around the region to see how we are handling the social issues around uh, our communities right now. And this is a perfect example and a model of what most communities can be doing is trying to find a balance and not really staying in their both positions in both corners and not willing to give up a little bit of our beliefs and understandings to come to the middle and really have a deep appreciation for one another. Right, and last but not least, before I let you go, because you are now the acting chief and the man who brings a lot of experience because you've been around us a long time here in Pasadena, really what, under your leadership, what can we really uh, expect and, and really uh, gain from this new chapter in Pasadena's history? I think my job as a chief of this great organization and being in this community is to build a bridge between our external, internal community and policing and make sure it's one bridge, one community, and with the priorities we're sharing on both sides that we're getting them done together. Well, we certainly appreciate you giving us time and we'll look forward to seeing you inside. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's going to be a one shot show. Well, it's only going to happen a couple times. Same thing with one shot. It took us two years to try to pull it together. And we're back with another guest here today. And, and this gentleman here, for those of you who are watching the show, really is what inspires me and inspires us as a community to follow his lead because he's been around Pasadena a long time and he's certainly have mentored me to make sure that we serve this community in the most effective way. And today is, is really an illustration of that. So I'd like for you to share with the viewers, you know, your name, because I don't want to, I don't want to take anything away from you. And really, what does this event mean to you and what are your hopes? Sure. Well, I'm Steve Mermel. I'm the city manager. I've been with the city close to 30 years, city manager for a couple of years now. Uh, this is a, a very timely event. There's, there's tension in our community. There's tension in our country, frankly, about police, community relations, incidents primarily with young men of color. And the only way we're going to bridge the gaps is through dialogue. We're not going to do it by people screaming at each other and yelling at each other. It's not productive. Uh, tonight's event is a fantastic example of really what you can do when people sit down together and just have a quiet conversation, share their views, share their experiences. Uh, and this is a start of a dialogue we need to be having more here in Pasadena. Well, I would like for you, before we let you go, uh, really share with the viewers the courage that went into standing strong to show everyone how Pasadena is the model city and you've done that I mean every every step that I've seen Steve and, and I've been following this pretty close you continue to exemplify uh, what a true leader is all about I would like for you to just share with the viewers really where are we going to see Pasadena fall into uh, that Richter scale? Are we going to be a, a 10 moving forward? Are we going to stay a 3? Are we going to be a 5? Where, where do you hope to see us when all this is said and done? Well, first, I appreciate your kind words. They're, they're not true. It's, it's, it's easy in a community like this with so many people all pulling in the same direction. Pasadena is a fantastic community. We have great relations with our neighbors here in the north and Altadena. Uh, and we're going to be a model because we are a model in so many ways uh, to our country. Uh, Pasadena is more than just the city people see on January 1st. Uh, it sets the tone in a lot of respects. We've made a name for ourselves in many, many positive ways. And this is just one other positive way that we're going to do that. Well, I certainly appreciate you giving us this time. And I certainly look forward to it because uh, truly, viewers, Steve is, like I said, really mentored me as a commissioner, and I get excited to join forces with you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, take care. It was very successful, quite frankly. It was very successful. I mean, I, I just have to tell you that I'm sorry that you guys don't continue to do it. I, I don't. I'm some, a lot, some of the players have moved on, but I'm just saying that it, it was it was successful because we have some issues that black men in this community need to step up and deal with. And 
I appreciate the fact that other individuals want to. We have one of the most incredible players of today's event, and uh, I'm excited about her interview because my relationship with her since I've met her has just been uh, phenomenal. She's demonstrated unbelievable leadership, and for her to be the chief here now, the dean, I think we got a gift. So I'm hoping that with what you're going to say about today's event is going to just raise everyone's uh, awareness about how committed this community is and the leadership that's coming out of today's event. So I think that this was a, a great time for us to interact with the community. Um, there was a lot of dialogue going on, a lot of listening, a lot of interaction, and I look forward to us having dialogue all the time, not just when we come together, but any time in the community that we always dialogue. And I forgot to tell you viewers, this is a very modest woman. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start by letting her introduce herself and sharing with you who she is and why um, I've put her on this platform. Because if we can demonstrate to the community how sincere and the outreach of community policing, this is the person who would show us what a model is about. So my name is Vicki Stuckey, and I'm not a chief. I'm actually a captain at Altadena Sheriff Station. Yes, I am considered the chief of police of Altadena, but my rank is definitely a captain. I've been on the department for 33 years, and uh, no, I wasn't born and raised in Altadena. I was born and raised in Southern California. Um, I was actually educated um, through uh, the city of Compton. I proudly am from the city of Compton, and I want everyone especially young people, I want you to know that it doesn't matter where you come from, it just matters of where you want to go. And there, there's always a way and I'm always available to speak with not only our young people, but our, our adults in the town of Altadena. Wow, and, and before I let you go, why don't you share with the viewers how important is an event like this for our community and, and what are your hopes for the outcome? So I think it's very important, not only today, but like I say, any day that we can dialogue with one another, it is very important. We all need to become involved and talk to one another uh, from across the table over a cup of coffee. A dialogue is, is very important. I am always interested in, in your opinion. Wow, well, we thank you so much. Thank you. And, and I, I appreciate you and I appreciate uh, the leadership that's been demonstrated here today of all the, the leaders here at Pasadena and Altadena. Thank you Thank so you much. So I much. appreciate it. All right. You know, while just like we don't always get the whole story in the video, you only get the, you know, drama part, or you only get the part that someone has reported. But that's how I think that the media has forced us to the opportunity to see. Um, All right, and we are back, and we have one of the most profound, I would say, leaders here in Pasadena from not only a, a community commitment perspective, but also from a legal perspective. And I think he can really shed a lot on what this event today means for our community and certainly for our history. So why don't you why don't you share with us? Sure, but you thanks, know, thanks for the exaggeration. Oh well, well you know, <laughs> actually, this uh, gentleman here has 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 opened a lot of folks' eyes here in Pasadena yeah. when it comes to the legal process. Well, this is an interesting uh, situation. Uh, there's a uh, number of tables and um, the. Uh, uh, table dialogue with uh, always one police officer. Uh, we're having a very particular table I'm on, uh, very frank discussion of the Baloo incident. Uh, we have an African-American police officer from the LAPD who, you know, is engaged with us. And uh, so it's a thought thoughtful dialogue. It's useful to, use, useful to do it. And how, how important do you think uh, a meeting like today's meeting and the effects are to change the image and Pasadena moving forward. Well, the the um, where the rubber hits the road is um, whether the department makes uh, serious structural changes that uh, address its problems because it's had the problems. And um, I I think um, Chief uh, Perez is. Um, is a breath of fresh air. I think he's committed to uh, making structural reforms that will um, 
begin to address uh, the problems that the department has. The department in many respects is a very good department, um, but there's a lot of room for improvement and I think um, uh, we've got a, um, a chief who is more committed to, um, or an interim chief, because he um, uh, is not a permanent chief, but I think he's very committed to um, uh, making structural reforms in the department that are needed. So, so I'm hopeful. Okay, and before I let you go, I'd like for you to share as much as you can uh, with the viewers. If we are successful, what can this do for our judicial system? Well, hopefully, uh, it'll reduce the number of um, uh, uh, cases that uh, of critical incidents of use of force, uh, where there's uh, repeatedly death, of, deaths of young African American men, uh, or in the case of Chris Ballou, uh, a severe uh, beating and broken leg, um, and big payouts. Um, the you know the objective is to get officers to do what's right. Uh, uh, some of that's attitude changes, but uh, most importantly, it's having the structures in place that ensure there's accountability and that these things don't happen again. And if they don't happen, then the city of Pasadena is not going to be paying out uh, the kinds of million dollar settlements that it is paying out to uh, victims of police violence. Wow. Well, certainly, viewers, as you can see, a man who is right on point as to uh, remedying some of the challenges that we've seen as a result of, I would say, a slight disconnect of the community, if yes. I may. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, like I said, we'll see some great results, especially after today's meeting. Well, there's been a lot of dialogue, and uh, this, is in, this is continuing that dialogue, and the dialogue is going to keep going and, until there is serious institutional change. But I think we're on the road. Well, I certainly appreciate it. All right, you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. How do we go about recruiting more African American males and send the police to you? Changing that, kind of changing that. And we have uh, one of the most instrumental players of today's events here with us. He's the chair, and he's going to give us a little bit of background about what inspired him and what his role is, and really what vision do you really have as a result of this type of event? Uh, first of all, i like to thank everybody that uh, is participating in tonight's event. Um, my name is Okuri Ezeme. I am the chair of the Altadena Town Council, and that is the body that represents Altadena, the voice of Altadena. And as I said before, when you rattle Altadena, Altadena comes fierce. And today's event is very significant. The reason why today's event is significant is because it is a day of dialogue. People are just yearning for an opportunity to interact with the law enforcement so that they can feel comfortable. And we know that we love each other, we love our neighborhood. And interacting with law enforcement, as we are doing today, sharing what the uh, good uh, the steps and some of the good things that we ought to be doing and how we ought to behave in all situation makes it wonderful for everybody and makes it safer for all of us in the community. So why don't you share with the viewers how did you go about planning this because it looks like you got a lot of components in here we've seen uh, law enforcement agencies from not only Altadena and Pasadena but LA as well and we have uh, dignitaries here as well as as uh, academians here uh, from our local uh, PCC and certainly other campuses uh, again when Altadenans are rattled they come with fury with fears and once you engage Altadena the, the great minds come and they are able to attract a number of people from the educational uh, area from law enforcement. As you stated tonight, we have the sheriff station represented, we have Pasadena Police Department represented, we have the California Highway Patrol represented. So everyone who is somebody is here and everybody is somebody in Altadena by the way. We certainly appreciate you giving us this time, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the outcome of today's show. Wonderful. Thank you.
and uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Council Member uh, Jones, who is really the lead on this. Thank you, Council Member Jones. Thank you. Okay. Hi, and we uh, caught, I guess, the, the real woman behind this, uh, this masterpiece today because uh, actually we got together about three weeks ago, uh, met with the, the chief and uh, the city manager, and uh, you laid out a pretty um, phenomenal uh, strategy, or I should say vision, because the strategy will still be put in place. Uh, to bring everybody together and have this incredible um, orchestra of people. And the reason why I have to put it that way, you have some very powerful people in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that supported me and to Avis who came through and made this happen. It was started um, probably three or four months ago and it took that long to bring all these people together in one place to talk about something that's really important and something that we need to talk about and we need to move forward on. So why don't you share with the viewers really uh, how passionate uh, you found yourself involved with this kind of project. I mean, we don't uh, have this every day in the Pasadena Altadena area and if my uh, recollection uh, doesn't uh, uh, betray me, I think this is the first time I've heard about something like this. <laughs> well, it's the first time I've heard about it and the first time I participated in it, but I needed to find something, something to just ease the pain and, and what I felt when I saw the Chris Ballou beating. I just needed uh, something to say that I've made a difference and that People are made aware and become engaged so this doesn't keep happening to our young men. So I just found by just by the grace of God, Avis Ridley Thomas, and she's the um, mastermind behind Days of Dialogue. Okay. And last but not least, before I let you go, why don't you share with the, the audience and the viewers really what does this do for our history right now, our administration right now, and really the leadership uh, that we really need to, to heal during this type of, of incident. Okay, what I think it does for our leadership and for our history, it's a time where just a week ago, it was Martin Luther King, the 50 year anniversary of Martin Luther King, um, his death. And so now in this time in history, we're still fighting those same battles. Those same wounds are haven't healed and they're being dug in deeper. So now this is a chance to bring all that back into the open and to start the that healing and that process, that bridge that we need to start it. And each time we have these battles, we need to know we haven't won the war and we have to keep this going. Wow, but we certainly appreciate you giving us some of that insight because uh, viewers need to understand how active this community is and, and when something of this magnitude happened, we can come together and our police officers and, and, and law enforcement agents are really people just like we are. Yes, and we want them to be able to do their job. I want to feel safe. I want the police there. And I want my kids to respect the police, but they're going to have to respect us too. And that's what we're here to say, is that we want mutual respect. Well, with that being said, I thank you so thank much you. for the interview. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Apartments were hired up so that way you okay get some people And I forces, and I'm sure you all know where they have to be investigated. And they are investigated to the point that you would not believe how much they are in our state. It's always not the same how the police can investigate a complaint or a use of a There are in the situation. 
Okay, now you mentioned about the body cam. When I saw the one particular news media, I forgot what the situation was about. When they got the person to the video, they turned on their audio. Okay. Why? Okay. Here's what you don't, you have to understand. As police officers, we also have rights. Okay. If we get involved in a categorical use of force, everything after that point, it could be infringing upon our rights also. So in some cases, those things are shut down because you have a spontaneous reaction to some things that you can't control. Like, I've never shot anyone, but I've been in a situation. I've been in situations where I've come close, and my reaction after the fact can be viewed by someone as like, "Why would he do that?" Or you'll see officers laughing about something after something which you might take as really tragic. But it's how we react and how we deal to that. But you have the right to not make any mistakes. And we're back, and we have another one of the great. Uh, guests that are here and the reason why I have to extend it that way because the viewers uh, my hope is that they can really appreciate first of all you're taking out your time this afternoon to come here and to participate in a community uh, event to say the least to where everybody has a little different opinion a different approach but everyone has come together to make sure that we act as one moving forward with solutions so why don't you share with the viewers your name and when, what inspires you to, to be a part of tonight's event? Uh, my name is Elliot Gold and I am the co-founder of the Altadena Coalition of Neighborhood Associations, or it's known as ACONA. I'm also a block captain for what's called the Upside Down Tea. And I have been involved in the community for decades, for probably 50 years. And it's my belief that when you cross the street, you look both ways before you cross. And that is that when you're working with law enforcement, you want to listen to what their view is and you want to listen to the view of the community. And it may not always be the same, but what's important, and that's why this dialogue is so important, is to be able to hear both sides. And you have to understand that a lot of times there are almost violent disagreements. They don't agree at all, but what's key is that when people listen to the other side, a dialogue begins, and that's what this is all about. Wow, so now, what really sparked um, your thought process uh, about something like this in the wake of Pasadena Police in their department, which is in I just want to thank you viewers for joining us today on Day of Dialogue. This is such an important task, not only for the organizers for today, but really our community. It gives us a chance to really engage our law enforcement agency and also engage our community. So hopefully, you viewers really enjoyed today's show and if you have any questions feel free to contact our city council members uh, the mayor the city manager and certainly reach out to our society show thank you